Some alkane molecules have halogens attached to them, like bromine or fluorine or chlorine. When we name alkanes with halogens attached, we basically follow the exact same rules that we would use for naming alkanes with branches. In this video, I'm going to show you how to name alkanes with halogens. I've got three examples to use. Now, I'm going to operate on the assumption that you already know a little bit about naming alkanes, so you know about things like finding the longest continuous chain of carbons, you understand the concept of branches and their different names, numbering the carbon chain, things like that. If that stuff sounds unfamiliar to you, then I want you to back up to my previous video and just kind of take a look at that where I'm going to explain those concepts with more detail. Before we get started on naming these three alkanes, let's talk first about the names of the, of the halogens when they are attached to our carbon chain as a substituent. When we have a fluorine on our carbon chain, we refer to that as a fluoro. When we have a chlorine, we call it a chloro. Bromine is a bromo, and iodine is an iodo. So that's all pretty easy to remember. For our very first example, we're just going to follow the same rules that we use for naming a branched alkane. So first we have to find the longest continuous chain of carbon atoms. And then we want to number that carbon chain starting at the end closest to our halogen. One, two, three, four, five from left to right because the bromine is on the left hand side. Then just like any other um, alkane, we're going to give a name to our substituent, including its location. This is a bromo and it is on carbon number two. And now we're ready to put the name together. We start by naming the substituent or naming the branch to bromo, and then we follow it up with the name of the parent chain or the longest carbon chain, pentane. Sometimes we have molecules that have multiple halogens on them, and also we have a mix and match of halogens as well as branches. So this example is gonna give us an opportunity to practice that. First, we need to find the longest carbon chain. Um, to do that, we're gonna start at any end and go to any other end and just try to find the longest possible path. It looks like my five carbon path here is the longest possible path. One, two, three, four, five. When we have a mixture of uh, carbon substituents as well as halogen substituents and we're numbering the carbon chain, we want to start numbering from the end that is closest to any substituent. It doesn't matter if it's a halogen substituent or in this case we have a methyl substituent. So we're going to number from left to right. Now let's get all of the names together for all three of these substituents. On carbon number two, we have two substituents. First, we have this one carbon substituent. One carbon is methyl, so this is a two methyl. Two, again, because it's located on carbon number two. Also on carbon number two, we have a chloro. And remember, every single substituent gets its own number, so we don't leave the two out of anything. And then last but not least, on carbon number three, we have a fluoro. So those are all of our substituents. Now we're ready to put the name of the molecule together. In the molecule's name, the substituents are going to come first, and then we'll say pentane, the name of the parent chain, or the longest continuous chain. The substituents are put in alphabetical order, not numerical order. That was something that I talked about in the last video. So we have to alphabetize these guys. Chlorine comes first in the alphabet, so that's two chloro will be first. And then after chlorine is the F for fluorine. So 2-chloro gets followed by 3-fluoro. And then last but not least, the 2-methyl. And it does seem kind of funny, I think, because most of us have the instinct of putting things together in numerical order, not in alphabetical order. But those are the rules, and we can't change them. So at the end of this, we're just going to fit in the name of the parent chain, pentane. And here's a super long molecule name. Here's our very last example. First thing we want to do is find the longest continuous chain of carbons. We've got three possibilities for the ending of, of this uh, longest continuous chain. We just want to find the path from one end to the other. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. So it looks like our longest path is seven carbons like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now this is something I wanna talk about as a pretty common mistake that students make. 
most of the time, like almost all of the time, our longest continuous chain is just from left to right and it's nice and straight, like these examples right here. That's typically how we see it. But we do need to keep an open mind and consider the possibility that our longest chain is not just going to be from left to right that it might curl itself around and go upwards, or it could have even been this way, you know, if the chain was longer in this direction. So we always have to have a really open mind when we're looking for that longest chain. Um, so now we need to number our chain and we need to start at the end that's closest to our substituents. We have two substituents on this molecule and it actually looks like they're dead in the middle. If we start from the left-hand side, um, one, two, three, four, they would be located on carbon number four. If we start from the top, they're also going to be on carbon number four. When it doesn't matter which way you go, left to right or right to left, you can literally go either way you want because no matter which way you go, they're going to end up in the same spot. Let's just give names to these substituents. We have on carbon number four, a chloro, and also on carbon number four, we have a two carbon substituent. A two carbon substituent is called ethyl, four ethyl. We're gonna put these in alphabetical order. C comes first in the alphabet, so we'll start with 4-chloro, and then we follow that up with 4-ethyl. And then last but not least, the name of the parent chain, which is heptane. A seven carbon alkane is heptane.